Welcome back. In the last video, we learned how to create a grid and spawn a bunch of different items uh, in the grid. And so here we have a grid of five by five squares. Each one is a 200 by 200 square. And in each of these squares, we're spawning the chair. And the chair has a random location and rotation within that square with the constraint that it will not be spawned too close to the edge so that it will never overlap with another chair in an adjacent square. So now we would like to get started with uh, splitting the room into randomly sized squares or rectangles rather. And in order to do that, we're gonna need to create some data structures. So we're gonna need to create a structure to hold the information for a particular uh, rectangle. And I'm gonna call that a floor node. So we're gonna create a class called floor node. Now, we could create an actor class. We could even create a U object, which is even more basic than an actor. But both the actor and the U object class contain code already in them. And we really just need something more basic than that. Uh, so let's go into Visual Studio. Um, so here we have our procedural room. This is an actor, and that's, that's okay because we need some of the stuff that the actor has access to. Uh, for example, we wanna be able to draw things to the screen, and in order to draw things to the screen, like a debug point or a debug circle, we have to pass in the world as the first argument, and the actor class has get world as one of its inherited functions. So that's why it's okay to use the actor class for a procedural room. Um, it probably uh, uses other things inherited by actor as well, which uh, we, can, we can look into. But what I'd like to do is create a class that doesn't really have anything in it. And as Unreal Engine developers, sometimes it's easy to forget that this is, after all, C++. And C++ uh, allows you to create regular, plain old C++ classes. And in Unreal Engine, you can, in fact, add, uh, create and add your own C++ class from scratch that doesn't have to inherit from the Unreal Engine hierarchy. Now, when you do so, you have to understand that you're, uh, you're responsible for managing the memory uh, of the resources you create because remember actors and u objects we get to participate in the garbage collection system but if you create your own class you don't necessarily get to co uh, participate in the garbage collection collection system sorry um, automatically uh, but we can we can uh, use our own class as long as we're smart about the memory and uh, so we're going to do that in this video so right here we have our proc gen series. This is the this is the name of my my project. So that's why it has inside the source folder a proc gen series folder which has the uh, classes associated with my project. Now I can go ahead and add an item to this, add new item, and you'll see here um, it tries to put it in the local uh, location of the intermediate project files. We need to change that and put it in proc gen series source proxion series. That way it'll, it'll be put in here with the other classes in my project and it'll also have access to the other classes and uh, that are in the folder as well as uh, the engine uh, header files if we want to include those. And I'm going to create a floor node class. So let's do a floor node dot cpp. We can add that. And I'm also going to create a floor node.h. So let's go ahead and right click, add new item. And here, this time, it says it's in the proc gen series source proc gen series folder. It's in the correct folder this time. And uh, I'm going to choose header file and I'm going to create floor node.h. And click add. And now you'll see that we have a basically empty .h and .cpp files. They don't uh, inherit from anything. Uh, in fact, there are no class, uh, there is no class defined in each of these. They're just empty. .h has the pragma once. We can go ahead and leave that. That's, that's beneficial uh, because we don't want to accidentally include uh, this particular header file twice anywhere. So pragma, pragma once takes care of that. So in floorno.h, we can uh, declare our own 
a regular old C++ class, and I'm going to create one, class floor node. So here we have our floor node class, and I'm going to give it a public section so that we can give it a constructor. And because we are managing the memory, or at least making sure that we're responsible for the memory uh, of this class, uh, I'm going to go ahead and declare the destructor. Again, this is another thing that if you're using Unreal Engine C++ for a long time and not doing development elsewhere, you may um, this may look a little bit a uh, little bit foreign because um, you know it's easy to forget that classes not only have constructors but they have destructors as well, and we can make sh make use of the destructor uh, when we want to ensure that our class is being destroyed when we're cleaning up our memory. So we're going to also add a private section here as well because we're going to add some variables and the variables should be uh, private unless we intend to access them from outside the class. Okay, so we have our floor node and we're going to uh, declare the floor node constructor and the destructor. And of course IntelliSense allows us to use this lamp and click on create definition and it'll just go ahead and give us uh, by default the definition here in floor node.cpp. So we can go over and see, boom, there it is. We don't have to type it out. Same thing with floor nodes destructor. I'm going to go ahead and create the definition and there it is. And we have it there in floor node.cpp. All right, so what does floor node need? Um, well, it needs to be able to store some integers. It needs the upper left x and the upper left y. And it also needs the lower right x and the lower right y. Those are the grid coordinates for the upper left and the lower right corners of the floor node. And I'm going to create a struct just so we can store those inside of it. And that would be uh, something efficient that we can use and just have a single variable that contains all that information. So let's make a struct. And I'm going to say f corner coordinates. And in Unreal Engines, typically our structs are prefixed with an F, so I'm going to keep that convention here. And I'm going to use an int32, and I'm going to call this upper left x, and I'm going to do an int32 and call this upper left y. I'm going to make another one called lower right x, and I'm going to add lower right y. And so I have a f corner coordinates type now, and I can use that as a private member here. And I'm going to call it corner coordinates. Okay, so we have a uh, corner coordinates, and uh, we can add a getter for this. And I'm going to use force inline. I'm going to say get, uh, it's going to be f corner coordinates type. It's going to be called get corner coordinates. Const, because we don't want to have to be able to change it, and I'm going to just simply return corner coordinates. Okay, so this gives us a getter for this. Um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and compile. And uh, you'll see that uh, it doesn't look like it recognizes int32 and force inline. Those are from the engine. Uh, but we should be able to access those. It should be defined. Um, so um, we, we should be able to compile. And uh, sometimes um, after compiling and generating Visual Studio project files, you'll see that those uh, IntelliSense error lines should go away. Uh, so while that's compiling, let's go ahead and let's create a floor node uh, overload for the constructor that takes a f corner coordinates uh, struct and uses that to uh, populate all of the corner coordinates uh, variables in our private member here. So I'm going to create a overload for this floor node. And this one takes an f going to be a const f corner coordinates reference called coordinates. And the reason this is going to be a const reference 
is because we want to be efficient and pass this in and when we pass it in we won't be making any temporary copies of the coordinate struct passed in and there it goes it just it just uh, successfully compiled so we didn't get any compilation errors for these by the way but again I was saying we pass this in as a const reference because we don't want to make a temporary copy which is made uh, when you don't pass things in by reference and it's const because we don't want to be able to uh, manipulate it we don't want to change it and so we're going to go ahead and create a definition for this right here and this gives us our definition and in our definition for this constructor overload we're going to take our private member variable corner coordinates and we're going to set its properties so we're going to say corner coordinates dot upper left x equals coordinates dot upper left x and we're going to do the same for upper left y lower right x and lower right y so i'm going to copy these and instead for of upper left x i'm going to put lower or upper left y and over here upper left y here we're going to say lower right x and lower right x here and then lower right y and lower right y that way um, basically all four of these ints from the coordinates are going to be used to um, set the values for coordinate coordinates our private variable and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that space there because I prefer the this um, this version with the um, if it's a pointer I like the asterisk on the type here the type name and if it's a reference I like the um, reference operator connected to it okay so we have our uh, corner coordinates uh, we have our uh, setter our, I'm sorry our, our getter for the corner coordinates and then lastly the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a getter uh, I'm sorry we have a getter I would like to create a setter and so I'm going to do a force inline and I'm going to say uh, call this a void it's going to be a void function set corner coordinates and it takes an f corner coordinates called coordinates and it will set cor uh, corner coordinates equals the coordinates so that way from outside of the class we can call set corner coordinates passing in an f corner coordinates called coordinates and we can set it okay so that is the floor node this is pretty simple and um, uh, pretty soon we're going to be using the floor node uh, to store some information and this will help us as a tool for um, splitting the room up to a, into a bunch of different floor nodes and this will allow us to um, uh, basically store that information and um, soon we'll once we once we do split it up we'll draw each of the floor nodes using the grid coordinates and uh, we'll get to see just how we split the room up uh, into random sections so uh, stay tuned in the next video we're going to continue with our algorithm